Hello, I'm Matthew Jarjosa, and welcome to the Studio Utani commentary for Aliens. We are watching the special edition today. Um, this is part four of a retrospective look at all the films in the Alien franchise in chronological order. Of course, this is YouTube, so there's no video or audio from the film, but feel free to sync up this commentary with your own copy of the film by pressing play now. Right. Hello, I'm uh, Matthew Jarjosa. I'm Justin Macy. And uh, today we're watching Aliens. Um, so so let me just say something right off the bat that's a little bit controversial with uh, people in this community. Um, James Cameron is a genius, and nowhere is that more evident than in the title of this movie. Uh <laughs> No, no, I'm being serious. Because, I know. Because it's like, if you thought just one of these things was bad, you just pluralize it, and all of a sudden, the stakes are higher, the game changes, and you've got one hell of a, a, a concept for a sequel that basically just sells itself. I like this title sequence. It's clearly a reference to the first title sequence, but he changed it up just enough so it's... It's new. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. It's kind of weird because if you look at it nowadays, there is a distinction somewhat between and the alien brand and the aliens brand, and we're seeing this is the kind of the aliens logo versus the more you know, uh, you know, blockier alien style. Uh, I I need to mention this really quick. This is one thing. One problem I have with this movie is I hate these credits because they go way too fast. <laughs> and I just get I don't know I just like I kind of want to read this and they're just a little bit too fast for me um, I don't know maybe that's maybe I'm you know self-owning myself there but that's you know that's kind of how I felt about it yeah, it seems like he's rushing to get into it he's like yeah nobody gives a shit about this yeah we're just getting the movie <laughs> and I don't know James Cameron is a genius so you know who am I you know to criticize him so uh, here we get the, uh, I believe the Narcissus is the name of the shuttle um, from the first movie. Uh, Ripley, uh, this is actually really beautiful. We're watching this mm -hmm. Blu-ray. This, this, this looks really good. And here's the interior of the skate pod. Is this the same set? As they used on the original? Um, Do you have any idea? I'm going to probably say they had to rebuild it. Yeah. Because that's typically... Typically, you know, you don't you, store this Yeah, stuff. you strike a set. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't know... Like, like, Alien was such a huge hit. There was obviously prospects of a sequel, but it just didn't come up. And um, uh, Ridley, I remember, was actually pretty upset that he wasn't asked to come back. And... I think the way James uh, got this job is because he wrote the Terminator script and the studio felt it was so strong, um, you know, that when they called him in, they said, hey, you got an idea for the Alien sequel. And he's, of course, fanboying out about that. Um, he's like, they, they basically told him that if you make Terminator for us and if that does well, we'll let you, we'll green light Aliens immediately. Okay. So... Well, even if it's not the same set, it looks close enough, you know? It's all... It, it, it evokes the original. Like, there it's, is kind of a different aesthetic with this one versus the previous one, and they did a mm -hmm. good job of trying to evoke, you know, that older era. As we, we'll soon find out um, Ripley has been asleep for uh, and floating in space for 57 years. Um, so, I mean... The world changed as much as you would imagine it would change in 57 years. Yeah, exactly. It's... Exactly. It feels like uh, there has been some progression of time. So, um, another interesting thing about this movie is James Cameron was um, very much from the Roger Corman uh, film school. So there's a lot of, similar to the first Alien, where we were pointing out there's a lot of just really cheap tricks. There's a lot of really cheap tricks in this movie, too. And uh, I'm happy to point those out because they're really brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, James Cameron also worked on Roger Corman's Galaxy of Terror, which was uh, 1980, and it was 
ostensibly an alien ripoff. And um, if you look at that film and you see some of the background map paintings, you see the beginnings of aliens uh, and sort of the uh, scenery that James Cameron uses in this film, which is, you know, it, it's, it's really cool. I don't know. There's something about it seeing people sort of start from a smaller place. There's the real star of the film, Jonesy. Why are they taking off the helmets? <laughs> there could be j aliens in there. <laughs> um, that's a good shot. That's like a that's like a oil painting. There, so. Yeah. I I just found out recently a lot of the special effects shots in like Star Wars and all those are all oil paintings. Like this is probably an oil painting. Yeah, that's, that that shot there's a lot more Star Wars or Star Trek than uh yeah. the original than the original Alien was. I, I'm just saying when you think about it, it's so simple, but that's actually yeah. that's that's actually oh, brilliant because yeah. you can paint anything. Yep. Yeah. And they uh, they were really good at doing uh, three dimensions, the old map painters. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, the it's, perspective. It's really brilliant. Oh, the, Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser. He uh, is such a good character in this if you, if you ask alex white uh he's a really terrible character really yeah yeah alex was uh not a big fan of um this character he thought he was kind of a stock villain so when he wrote uh when they wrote um uh the cold forge uh they their corporate character in that dorian was much more of a glengarry glen ross very uh, corporate savage character yeah, I just like seeing how far he goes, Paul Reiser, because he starts out. You you think well, he maybe he could he could really be a little bit earnest. We yeah. don't know. We don't really know how. Young. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. His I, intentions are from the very beginning, and no, I agree. I I think um I think Paul Reiser does a great job, and I think and and I I do you know have to kind of split a little bit with Alex. I I do think the character does what he needs to do. And it, it, it's a, you know, it's like you said, there is like, there is this earnestness to him where you're not entirely sure, you know, maybe, maybe he is kind of sincere, you know, but it turns out he is kind of a cowardly, uh, sniveling, um, you know, uh, just somebody kind of looking out for their own best interest. Mm -hmm. Um, so this scene scared me as a kid. Oh, it's a scary scene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah this is this is really great. Um yeah, all those reaction all those different reactions yeah. from the cat and her. Yeah, yeah. And and then, and then the cheap special effect. It, yeah, but it's good. Oh yeah. It's so good. But yeah, this is uh This is so horrifying, um, because you really, really feel you know just the weight of everything that's going on, and and here we go, uh. yeah, here we go. <laughs> and of course, oh, it was all a dream. Um, you know, so we get a lot of things happening. Uh, and this is kind of the economy of uh, James Cameron as a writer here, because we establish the you know the setting. We're fifty seven years in the future. We establish our hero. We establish our villain, and we establish our main character's problem, which is they are psychologically scarred by the events of the last movie. All in just like the span of like maybe two minutes. So here's our first big scene that was not in the theatrical cut. Um, it's kind of a, a nice little moment here where Ripley, of course, we, get, we see here it's just a hologram or a projection. But um, what's really great about this scene is we learn a little bit about Ripley's past and that she had a daughter and that being gone for so long, there was this, um, you know, it's just like you know how would you feel you know you knowing that you left your child for so long and of course if we did not have this scene uh we would not have alien isolation which um 
as far as I'm concerned, and I think as far as, you know, uh, Disney and the fan, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the fandom is concerned is pretty much in the same, uh, tier of canon as, as any of the movies. Amanda Ripley. I don't know if we'd ever do a commentary on Alien Isolation. That that, that would be hard to arrange. I'm not sure how we would do it. Mm-hmm. But it is... It, it's pretty good. I, I know you're not terribly into video games, but... I've heard good things and bad things about Alien Isolation. There, there's way more good things. I don't, I don't know who's saying the bad things, honestly. You notice that? Just, just an aged-up picture of... Uh... Sigourney Weaver there. Oh, oh, is it really? Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. You can see you can see Sigourney Weaver's face in it. Oh, they they kind of doing deep fakes before they did deep fakes. Right. Yeah, it's an airbrush job and pixel. They made it pixelated and. Yeah, it's like, like that's how much of a cheapskate uh, Paul Reiser is. It's like you couldn't even get her you know a high resolution Im- image. I found my. Signed a poster of Alien by Yafia Koto, by the way. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I knew I had it somewhere. You see, you see him at a convention? Um, I was actually at a horror convention. Okay. And there was actually, it was up for auction along with one that was signed by the entire cast. And I was bidding on the one from the entire cast and I got outbid. But I did manage to snag the one by Koto. So I'm like, okay, runner up. <laughs> Now, this is a great scene. I love uh, this scene because, you know, there we're seeing kind of the corporate attitude here and, you know, the lack of empathy. You know, it's just like, you don't, you know, we didn't see this thing. We didn't understand what happened. We didn't experience this. All we know is that you blew up our multi-million dollar, um, you know, star freighter and... You know, there's also a lot of the feminist stuff going on here as Ripley's character is not really properly given a voice in this in this kind of environment. You know, she's being kind of brushed off as irrational and um, you know, it's just like, you know, we, we can't be sure that you were thinking clear, clearly when you made these choices. Also, um, at this point in time, a million dollars probably when is not very much when you're accounting for inflation. Yeah. So they, I forget what number they just said. They said like a hundred million dollars, and I'm like, I don't know for the inflation, it might be a little bit higher than that, because the Prometheus was like three trillion. Hmm. Yeah. So, the Nostromo had to be a little bit more because it was actually created after the the Prometheus. But the Prometheus was a cutting edge science vessel, whereas oh yeah, that Stromo was just like a tow truck. Yeah, and that's yeah, no, no, that's the in canon explanation. I just, I just do think it's interesting when we're talking about the dollar amounts. Sure. You know, why would the tow truck be a few million when the Prometheus was a few trillion? Yeah. yeah. Right. Whatever. I'm. I'm. I'm I'm being silly intentionally. <laughs> God damn it! That's not all. It's one of those things you get down here. Yeah, this is a, uh, a reminder. Sigourney Weaver was nominated for best support. Uh, not best actress. Be- best actress. Yeah. I I'm so used to saying supporting actress because I'm thinking a lot about that category this upcoming season. But best actress and uh, the thing is, um, you don't usually get best acting awards for science fiction or a genre movie at the Oscars, which speaks to how exceptional this movie actually is. Yeah. Uh, her great character comes both from her and the script. It's really, it's a fantastic uh, development of the character from Alien. And and what's interesting about that is the studio um, didn't want her back. Wow. Yeah. The studio actually, uh, so, so when, uh, when Weaver was asked to come back for the role, she demanded a pay raise, and the studio said, "No, no, we're not going to give you a pay raise." And uh, they told James Cameron to uh, write Ripley out of the script, and James Cameron's like, "Well, eat my ass, Fox," yeah. <laughs> and uh, that was probably the right thing to say. It's a bold thing to say when you're just beginning your career, but right. it was well, the. But he had the clout from Terminator. That's which... 
That's I'm right. sure that pushed uh, that got him a lot of uh, mm-hmm. good opportunities on this movie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, because he was yeah, like I said, it was Terminator that basically got him this job. Um, and Terminator cost nothing. Yeah, Terminator was like two million or something. Yeah, that that's actually really low, even for nineteen. 19- 80, I think Terminator came out. It was just a bunch. Of, it's just like three actors running around. <laughs> yeah, for all, the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, it really is. <laughs> that's a that's another brilliant film, though. Oh yeah, uh, I love Terminator. It's also another one where almost the sequel kind of overshadows the original, but the original is great. Mm-hmm. So this is another scene that was added just for the special edition, um, Hadley's Hope, and we get introduced to Newt. And speaking of Terminator, this yeah, this set here looks like it was out of Terminator. A little bit, yeah. I mean, you could tell it's a miniature, but it's a damn good miniature. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, these the, these are some you know really really fantastic miniature models. I I, I forget what scale they are exactly but it's really well done i mean the um because uh in the theatrical cut we really don't get introduced to new until like midway through the movie so this is sort of um an interesting kind of uh intro to that character earlier is this the new scene oh no no i i misspoke this is actually um we're not quite there yet but it's it's the same section of the movie oh it is yeah. oh oh yeah but this was also this also wasn't in the theater right, right there wasn't anything on hadley's hope before they got there that's right believe. yeah they yeah. basically just went from the boardroom scene to uh hey ripley we got a problem yeah okay um i uh i uh <laughs> probably should have rewatched this before <laughs> i i got so tied up but, but i really liked the sequence i saw it for the first time Mm-hmm. you know a couple of days ago and i got watched the movie to get ready for this and i thought i thought it was a really great choice to include the well yeah because it also it's showing you kind of the attitude in the company a little bit they're they're very blase and they're very uh you know the the you know it's like one of these things it's like it's a, it's a mega corporation and they're just uh you know you get all these companies that probably these employees that are probably underpaid and uh, you know, there's a lot of you know. We got the kids running around here. It's 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 a bit a bit of a dysfunctional, you know, mega corporation. Of course, Waylon Yutani, um, which I believe Waylon Yutani was the invention of James Cameron. I, again, I haven't been able to find it because I, 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 I think in the first movie it was actually Leyland Toyota. Or, and, and that was showed up somewhere, and I haven't been able to find it anywhere in the movie, but um, it got turned into Waylon Jutani in, in this movie. Yeah, there's New, Newt and her family. Yep, here we are. Now we're seeing Newt. And uh, here we are seeing the derelict again. Now, I believe they actually did pull this out of storage. Okay. So it's a pretty massive model, but it's also not so big that you couldn't just store it someplace. Okay. So they they put this one away, but the um probably had it in a couple pieces. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It really. They don't keep the sets around, but they might keep stuff like this around in storage somewhere. Mm-hmm. Do you know how big the model was? Um, it's fairly big. I mean. I, we're kind of in this, you know, I, I would say like 15 foot by 15 foot room. It, it, it might just barely fit in this room. Okay. It, yeah, it's 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 big. Yeah. It, it's not like a small thing. It's pretty But it's big. not like... It's not enormous. It's not the size it looks. Yeah. Okay. A lot of forced perspective. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's like at least like 10 feet long. At least. Okay. From what I probably, there's probably people watching or listening to this commentary right now thinking, you know, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, um, and you, uh, you're, you're to an extent you're right because I'm just trying to remember. Yeah. Uh, oh no worries. <laughs> um. 
Yeah, I really don't think they should have cut this for the theatrical cut. I know I I was reading that uh, the studio wanted him to get the time down so they could book more screenings at the theaters. And that makes sense. And to be honest, I don't know if this is needed per se. It just adds a lot more to the film and it adds a lot more to, um, you know, Newt's character, seeing kind of what happened and it just adds a little bit more to the scope of the movie. Mm -hmm. Right, because this is a bigger movie than the original. Definitely. You know, the there there's um the original film you know i remember what james cameron was saying was really um he, he was saying that that one the the scary part came from the horror of it and with this one he really wanted the emphasis to be more on terror and intensity and i think you know that works mm-hmm. you know and it's so it's not so much about the claustrophobia as much as we're in this terrifying situation where yeah, we, we're up against an enemy we don't really know much about. Mm-hmm. Here's our face hugger. Man. Yeah. And this is this is the eighties and there's lots of lots of smoking <laughs> in films. Mm-hmm. The next futuristic movie needs to have everybody vaping. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, one of the things that gets talked about, and this is where the movie picks up in the theatrical cut, but um, one of the things that gets talked about a lot with this movie is its status as an action film and whether or not that, you know, taking the series in that direction was the right thing to do. And I have some interesting thoughts about, about that, that I'd like to, I'd like to get into at some point in, in this commentary and we'll, we'll get there. Um, but right now we have, um, you know, kind of Ripley being brought back in, uh, into the story of it because it's like hey we lost contact with somebody on LV426 and uh, I don't know we kind of want you there just sort of as an advisor and she's like what the fuck are you talking about you you threw me under the bus you know why would I help you um, which is of course you know a very strong natural response one would expect I mean, they basically told her, right? They told her, it's like, yeah, we don't, you're, we don't need your opinion. And now they're saying, yeah, we'd like your opinion. Mm-hmm. Of course, she's going to say, fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's a great character. Very, uh, mm-hmm. you know, strong and. Yeah. And, and but, but she's also vulnerable, you know? No, no exactly. So I think. No, it's, it's very human. And I, yeah. I think that's something James Cameron is very good at is he, uh, James Cameron, love him or hate him, he's very good at at pinpointing the heart of a scene and the heart of a script, and he's very economical about it, and his screenplays are always structured in such a like pitch-perfect way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some people don't like that and I, under, I believe me I understand that it's, it's like some people are just like I, I'm not surprised watching a James Cameron movie because it's just so you know it's so structured but then at the same time I'm kind of like th- that's something that I really admire and that's something that kind of helps me get into the movie a little bit more uh, yeah I think he him and Spielberg I think are the two greatest craftsmen mm. in the cinema I, I would say if I had to choose directing wise, I would. I, I mean, no shade at James Cameron. He's a great director. I almost want to put Spielberg one tab above James Cameron as like if we're talking about who's the better director. But I think uh, Cameron is probably a better writer. I, I, yeah. I, I, Cameron is a better writer than Spielberg. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. I consider them to be kind of on the same level, but of course Spielberg's had more. Yeah, movie. I mean, he's made. Yeah, he he's more a of, ton more movies. Well, he's yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Spielberg's a better director. Cameron, I I would say, is a much better writer. But Cameron and but they're both great businessmen. 
Like, mm-hmm. yeah, Cameron knows how to make money. <laughs> He he really. I I mean that was the pitch meeting for aliens. Yeah. He, he wrote he wrote alien on the on the board and the, just let the studio watch look at it for thirty seconds, and then he drew an S, and then he put two lines through the S, and I uh, said we're in, kid. Yeah, no, no, that that's what I mean. That shit that sold the movie because yeah. that. It, it, I like that business card that works as a, uh, like call, phone call. Yeah. Device. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's really it, clever. Yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 really interesting, kind of how there's this sort of looking back on it nowadays. There's sort of a retro futurism to the Alien franchise. Right. Um. Obviously, from the '80s perspective, this is pretty futuristic looking, and it still is. Not saying it's not, but. As the series has gone on, it's sort of been... But it has more of an analog feel than something like uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Right. But kind of what I'm getting at or is... tactile, I think, you, maybe. No, ab- no, no, no. You're on the money. What I'm saying is, as the franchise has kind of gone on, it's sort of... Um, that's sort of just become the aesthetic of the whole franchise. It's, it's very analog. But I think the last two movies moved away from that. The uh, the first the first two. I guess. Well, well, oh yeah, the two right, prequels. Right, right, right. They well, went in a kind of different direction. That's because Ridley Scott doesn't give a fuck about canon. Yeah, and, and, yeah. He and, does his own. You know, he'll yeah. make the, exactly the movie he wants to make. And I, I think there are some people that are watching yeah. and saying, "Hey, you can't, you can't do this." And he'd be like, um, "Okay," and yeah, he'll he'll work with it. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure somebody said. Uh, you can't put an alien in the movie and not have the alien in the title. Like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm almost positive. I can't be certain, but I'm almost positive that that happened. Yeah, but I there's, I think the title isn't something that he would even care what the end result is. Yeah, you know, I, it's really just the movie itself. And then sure, if the studio screws it up from there, he's like, well, I made the their... movie I wanted to make. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is a Sulaco, and uh, if you kind of missed the intro there, they kind of uh, shape the ship uh, in the shape of a gun, which I, I always thought was kind of badass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I recognized that when I was watching it. Yeah, it look, looks just like one of their guns that they use. <laughs> um, so for, so this, this kind of reminds me of the original Alien. Because remember, it's kind of showing us around the ship a little bit yeah. at the beginning. Now it's we're kind of getting a little bit of that. And, you yeah, know, that's kind of cool. And then, uh-huh. of course, yeah. You know, yeah, I, I, I love it. Uh, moving camera shot. It looks like, so, looks like we're somebody walking around in there, you know. And that's one of the things that really is great about these movies is they always manage to kind of keep it grounded, which makes it all the more real. Mm -hmm. And we're getting introduced to our ensemble here. Um, And I... I There's a good character moment coming up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love all these little character moments. I, I, I absolutely love all this military banter. This is... This is a lot of fun. And I've been thinking about it. I think you were right that those character moments are lost kind of in the prequels. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, they don't... They they do broader things, I think. Well, here they're doing... Well, here it's very small. Well, and you don't need a lot. You just need to have something like when a, a Pone wakes up and he puts a cigar on I thought mouth. that... Yeah, that's the moment I was talking yeah, about. Yeah. I think that's... That's all you need. It's great. like, okay, I think I get it. I get this character. Yeah, you immediately understand everything about that character. That guy, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Bill Paxton. And, and Bill Paxton and the uh, the guy who's yeah. around till the end. Another glorious day in the core. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I love, uh, he's dressing them all down, talking. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I love the core. Oh, Man, this floor is freezing. What do you want me to do? Fetch a slippers for you? Gee, sir, would you do that? <laughs> yeah, this is great. I love all this. Bill Paxton is, one, is yeah, he, up there. Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah, he's one um, of the best. Is he the only guy that has been killed by a an alien, a predator, and a Terminator? I think I think he is. He has that distinction. Wow. Vasquez. Vasquez. 
Love Vasquez. Yeah, I love her. And there's a there's a a line coming up with her. It's like, has anyone mistaken you for a man? And you know, she's like, No, have you? Which is a good line. You know, I was talking the other day. Uh, some this uh, guy I listened to on YouTube, Rob Ager, he uh, pointed out that uh, Starship Troopers is he considers Starship Troopers. He was explained it that it was a parody of Aliens in a way. And I think watching this scene, you can... Well... There, there's a lot of scenes that are kind of... that yeah. There's clear parallels between well, the well, two films. It's actually interesting because you could argue that Aliens was inspired by the novel Starship Troopers, which was written in the 60s, and it was, you know, very much about, a, you know, a militaristic science fiction movie. Um, yeah, and, you can and, say this is a straight... This is kind of a straight version of that story, while Starship Troopers, the movie, is a... It's kind of taking from Aliens. Starship Troopers is a is a brilliant film. I I, yeah. I need to watch it again. It's, so, it's such a people. We'll talk about that movie when we watch that movie. But yeah, it it was misunderstood for almost decades, really. Um, mm -hmm. So Bishop yeah. is also one of those characters that sticks with you. Yeah, Lance Henriksen does a fantastic job here. And this is this is a great character introduction. Th this here. movie sca this scene scared me as a kid too. Oh yeah, because I thought Bishop's gonna stab this guy in the hand, especially after you watch the first Alien movie. You don't know. Well, I didn't watch the first Alien. I I this watched was your first one. I think I did watch this first. I was like eleven, and I watched it without my uh, parents' permission. I, I actually borrowed it from my friend. My friend had it. Uh, their parents had it on VHS, and I borrowed it from them and i watched it and uh, i was i was really scared because i'm like i'm watching a movie that i'm not supposed to be watching <laughs> but uh it stuck with me um and this is a great moment here too because we're playing into another aspect of ripley's character and her uh robophobia yeah yeah i know i thought you never miss bishop said anything about android on board oh it yeah just, i love I the just, way bishop's eyes look you know the way he has them open it's just something you don't i don't know how to exactly yeah well put it, it. it kind of it kind of brings him a little bit into that uncanny valley yeah. territory where he's like he's not quite human but he's pretty human um he could he probably i i he probably passed the turing test i actually think in in universe that's the thing. Like, David passed the Turing test. He was, like, one of the first robots to do so. Um, but, yeah. So, this is this is great, too. This is just adding a little bit more to Ripley. And you were speaking earlier about her vulnerability and her humanity and whatnot. And this is the thing. It's like, this is... She can have prejudice. You no, know, this is a great this yeah. is great writing because it's like we have a hero that isn't just a hero. It you know, she is she's got her own imperfections and you know, we understand where those prejudices come from, but it doesn't dismiss the fact that they are prejudices. Um so there's something brought up in the scene that I, I do need to talk about here. Um so we have Gorman um talking to the troops here. I like this character a lot because he's very insecure and trying to give the impression that he's a leader. Uh, but he says a line here about um, about a uh, you know uh, something happened and a xenomorph may have been involved. And that we have to talk about this because xenomorph is the official legal name that we're giving to the aliens now. There's a bit of controversy about that because um, I don't know if you remember in Avatar, the element they were after, unobtainium. Yeah. So unobtainium made people groan because that's just, unobtainium is just a generic term for an element that we haven't discovered yet. Xenomorph is the same thing in biology. Oh. It would be kind of like if you saw a rabbit and you had never seen a rabbit before, it's a xenomorph. So oh, okay. <laughs> there's something kind of funny about the fact that James Cameron keeps on picking these very generic terms for things. Um, but um, they need to kind of bring it up a little bit just because it's 
you know, it's very intrinsic to the franchise. But the reason why I think it kind of works in this context is because of the character Gorman being this very insecure leader, trying to give the impression that he knows what he's talking about. So he just throws out this technical sounding term, mm -hmm. xenomorph. I think in terms of story, that's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, I think the actual species name is xenomorph... Um, XX121 and then Alex White uh, gave it the scientific term uh, Plagiaris Pripatins which means the copy improves upon the original okay yeah. so that's a lot of fan lot of jargon yeah uh, fan jargon but Will how do Paxton. we get how do we get, you secure that shit Hudson <laughs> yeah but I do like the Gorman character mm -hmm. a lot. And that plays a lot, as we'll see later, into the um, obvious Vietnam commentary. Here's something I noticed about the uh, this uh, special edition of the movie. It feels like a lot more of a slow burn than the original. You think so? I, I, yeah, I would say so. How, 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 how's that exactly? Well, you know, it gives you little pieces of the alien but the the actual alien does not show up i it figured does, out until about halfway through the movie right you know so it it follows and i think they you know and they cut a lot out from the beginning mm -hmm. for the theatrical cut so um they get to the alien i i think the difference though is in terms of it's just in terms of the pacing mm -hmm. like the thing yeah. is the original alien is very deliberately slow and it unsuspectingly backs you into a corner and that was something we talked about is like yeah. it, you're watching it and it's like you know what's gonna happen but you're still kind of in for the ride and you could almost be fooled a little bit um this movie is a lot um it's a lot more involved in a way and it's a lot the the pacing is a lot faster um, i think in terms of dialogue and yeah stuff like that i would say so but i'm just talking about in terms of the actual major events in the movie it still follows the uh structure I, I, that was set forth in the i i think red letter media actually pointed out that not just the first two aliens but actually all the alien movies have the exact same plot yeah and that's really it was really funny it's like yeah. they, they actually kind of do um and that's oh yeah and the the this is one of the big cheap tricks um uh it james looks so good yeah james cameron told his team okay make me a power loader out of styrofoam and he said we're gonna have a arts and crafts day here's a bunch of styrofoam figure it out and they're all telling him you're crazy and he's like no i want you to go into this room with all this styrofoam make me a power loader and they came up with a power loader. That's awesome. Yeah. I, lo I love this moment. It, there's a meme with that, where do you want it? And they just cut to him smiling. <laughs> um, this, um, but no, I think you're, you're on the money. They're kind, they, they really are kind of the same movie. They just feel completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is more of a, there is going to be aliens. That's kind of, that's the setup for this movie. Whereas the setup for the original is there might be. You no, know, sure. Aliens, sure. you know. Well, yeah, because we, we, they know they're going after something. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think that sticker says, uh, bug stomper, we in, we endanger species. <laughs> and there is something from, that was repeated in, uh, Starship Troopers. Oh, was I haven't seen well, Star Well they had, you know, the idea of Oh yeah. We're gonna kill those bugs. We're gonna oh. squish those bugs. The only good bug is a de is right. a dead bug, yeah. yeah. Um so Aliens as an action movie that is actually something that a lot of uh, like it, it's weird to me, there's kind of this schism in the fandom a little bit between people who prefer Ridley's movie and people who prefer Cameron's movie and there's a group of people that feel like Aliens kind of took the series in uh, n not a bad direction per se, but it took the series in this d 
direction where it's just about like Marines shooting at aliens. And there's just a lot of people felt like that just dumbed everything down. And maybe to an extent that's true if you look at like other media that came out. But I think just in terms of this film, like if we're going to call it an action movie, like my argument is Aliens is a very unconventional action movie. I, I feel like it's this movie and Predator really are, are kind of two examples of these late 80s um sort of commentaries on the action genre in a way uh predator opens up is like the third act of any given 80s action movie and then turns into a horror film as it shows like these badass commandos are up against something they don't know how to fight and it's similar commentary here because we got all these uh, characters that have been trained to feel like they are badasses and then discovered they actually don't really, once you're actually thrown into the thick of it and you're in this dangerous situation, they don't know what they're doing and they become scared and helpless and vulnerable. And I, I kind of appreciate that. And to me, if, if Alien is... is truly an action film I, I think it's a very unique action film um yeah I'd say Aliens is def. I would definitely classify it as an action film no doubt about it and mm -hmm. I would say that it, it's yeah I'd say it's a very good action yeah. film it's probably about as good as they come I, I, I don't mean to say it's not an action movie I'm just yeah. saying that I think when people think action movie they think it, it, like like it, it would be a thing if this movie was all about, like, these badass, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger characters and, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson going in with guns and shooting aliens and being badass about it. But it's not about that. It's about them going in there and getting slaughtered and being scared and realizing that they're not the character. It's almost like it's a movie about these characters that have been trained to feel like they are those characters yeah it's sort of like a vietnam movie well yeah there you go exactly yeah that i mean that and that's exactly like a good a good vietnam movie is they mm -hmm. go there and they mm -hmm. see the horrors of and this is it as the horrors oh, of war and that's 100 yeah. percent what james cameron was trying to say was yeah. like yeah vietnam was a shit show uh, uh -huh. and, and that's yeah that's basically what this movie is I didn't know if it was if he ever talked about Vietnam in relation to oh, it. Oh no, no, it's very well known okay. that yeah, James Cameron modeled this off of Vietnam. Yeah, and yeah, that and this is a great scene too. Where I, I'm kind of going off talking about some of the broader themes, but um, yeah, we're getting this great little moment here, the express elevator to hell, and we're seeing all these little great character moments as this is happening. We and get... that cheap special effect that just looks, it looks very good. It looks better than mm -hmm. most special effects we see today. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, some of this compositing is a little bit weird. This one's, me. that one's a little wonky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, and there was one earlier that was kind of like that, but, um, you know, it's like, once you're in the story, you kind of overlook that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think there's a moment I maybe you missed it. It was like you know your camera's acting up. Uh, oh, yeah, there here it is. Here it is. I love this. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think there's just, and this is also something I think was just in the special edition. This kind of speaks to what I was talking about earlier. They're talking about, yeah, we're, we got all this cool, awesome stuff, and you're realizing that it doesn't matter because, you know, we don't really know how to use it or we don't really know what we're up against. Phalanx. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's Bill Paxton. Yeah. is so fantastic. I love this. He was letting go and knives. Yeah, knock it off. It's two minutes. People get hot. Um, somebody wake up, Hicks. I, I this is all a really great dialogue because it feels real. 
It just feels like stuff that people would say. The pilot character in this film, uh, you know, she has been copied before. I, I, I think she might have been copied in Starship Troopers, but the thing I remember is she was copied in, um, in uh, StarCraft. If you're playing as the Terran race in StarCraft, um, the one of the uh, vehicles that you can fly, the, the character that represents that vehicle is clearly modeled off of uh, the pilot in uh, Aliens. Mm. It even says some lines that she says, in the pipe, five by five. This is great miniature work. And that cheap video. Yeah, back from the original. Cheap video is an awesome technique for selling your science fiction movie. Yeah. And then, you Those know, little light trails. You, you, um, I, I know you haven't watched it yet. We're going to, we're going to do, um, uh, a video on Neil Blomkamp soon, but they did the same thing in district nine. Right. I've seen bits yep. of it. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. It looked good. Yeah. I'll let you borrow that. Awesome. Yeah. But, um, yeah, great miniature work. The film did. Uh, the film was nominated for six Academy Awards, and it won two: one for the visual effects, and one for the sound design. Um, but yeah, it, it sounds good. Yeah, we can't hear it now. But. Yeah, cause, yeah, we're watching it on mute. <laughs> but um, we, uh, but it was nominated for the sound design, and and you know, even not he uh, hearing it right now when you're watching it in the movie and hearing uh, you know the sound the sounds go a long way in selling a lot of these effects works oh yeah they make the they make the image so much more bigger like you know they make the Im- they make you you kind of have to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it really puts you in the world of the image yeah and, you know, which is a good sound a good soundtrack can do that well i mean that's the thing that they say is like uh, sound designers are the unsung heroes oh, yeah. Uh, of film they they truly are doing god's work because a good sound design uh, sound design can make or break a movie mm-hmm. uh you can kill a movie with absolutely awful uh sound yeah. design uh but nobody ever thanks the sound designers for anything right um and i, I it's not my field but i i love and I appreciate sound designers so much because they're so creative because you can make sounds out of almost anything. It's, it's crazy. They're like in the same way that props person might look for something that kind of looks like it could become a smart gun props or a sound person will find something that says like, we need to find something that sounds like it could fire from a smart gun and it doesn't matter what it is. It could just be them clapping uh, two uh, bells or something together. Yeah. If it makes the sound, then that's all that matters. Yeah, Foley, Foley work is so interesting. Yeah. The stuff they do. No, it's great. It's fantastic. So here's our kind of first big horror moment where the movie kind of slows down just a bit and we try to figure out what the hell happened to this place Mm -hmm. um yeah this sequence seemed a little bit more stretched out in the special edition but i can't remember if they added anything yeah um but it's it's you know it's a good sequence no it it really is and we played uh we played hope's last day and we kind of saw experience a little bit of what happened mm-hmm. um for those who have played the alien rpg um it was kind of a prequel is that the one where we died yeah that's the one where everybody died yeah. <laughs> um yeah Keep it tight, people. What is he, a fitness instructor? <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know. Well, yeah, this is yeah, the military. I, I, I mean, yeah, they all kind of have to keep up on that. Yeah. Motion trackers. Back. Yeah, here's a famous, yep, yeah, the motion trackers back. Um, motion trackers, brilliant plot device because it's super scary because 
all you know is something is moving. Yeah. You don't know what it is. Uh, you don't know what it could be. Um, and when it's coming closer, that's so scary. Yeah, I know. It's great. It was, yeah. It's pro- like I said, it's my favorite scene in the last movie is the, the yeah. Dallas and the Vents. That scene is friggin' terrifying. Um, and it's also another sound design thing. Mm-hmm. It's like the, oh yeah, those beeps. Yeah, that's yeah. The, yeah, it's not that's a great. yeah, it's not a uh, you know, it's not a prop. You know, that's something that's added in post. Uh, I think what's coming up here. I I I I don't remember if this was in the theatrical cut or not, but it's mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of a little funny. Because we've had all this build up so far. It's a very, very slow moment, and we don't know what we're going to find. Uh, but then we end up kind of finding something. Not to spoil the tension or anything. <laughs> I love the uh, the production design in this movie. Yeah, you can tell James Cameron cared a lot about that. Well, when he was, you know, because he was a yeah, because yeah, he was a production designer. He yeah. knows. Well, yeah, when he was working for Roger Corman. Yeah. Now, Roger Corman Film School. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yep. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the gerbils. Little hamster. Or hamsters. Whatever. Like, whatever they are. Yeah. I... <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Gerbil hamster. Um. Yeah, James Cameron um, was the was a production designer for Roger Corman. So yeah, it's he even directed his first movie. Yeah, for him. Yeah, Piranha Two: The Spawning. I have not seen that film. I don't know. I can't speak to how good of a movie it is. I heard it's pretty good. Have you really? I heard it was really, really terrible. But well, it's a Piranha movie. I mean, <laughs> my favorite thing was. Uh, when they did the re-release of it not too long ago and they made like this very prestigious looking cover for it and it says from the director of Titanic and Avatar and then it's like in like this very fancy like Sinzel font Piranha 2 The Spawning <laughs> no. Sir this place is dead You like the hole from the acid blood in the last one? Get a load of this yeah. Hell yeah we we just made it even bigger. <laughs> Something I thought was really interesting, actually, if you remember, when uh, Ripley fires the harpoon into the alien at the very end, it doesn't like melt the harpoon, or we don't see it do that. You know, <laughs> I, I I'm just I'm just a little. T- I'm not I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying it's a little interesting detail that we never saw the adult alien bleed acid in the first one, but. They do in this one, and it, of course, it's nobody questions that. I just think that's an interesting note. Yeah, so you see in the background there, there's a little bit of the Galaxy of Terror-esque production. Design. Yeah, I like the uh, difference in acting there between uh, Ripley and uh, Paul Reiser kind of a it was kind of a funny visual you know you see ripley standing up straight and right she doesn't even care that it's raining and paul riser's over yeah. there trying to cover himself yeah it's it kind of draws a difference between those characters yeah. because he's kind of a corporate weenie and uh she's uh this very grounded rail it's like i've seen some shit yeah it was a funny it was it was funny it's funny you know? juxtaposition yeah um and it's just you know it's just real you know uh-huh. and that that's that's the thing with um, a lot of these movies. It, it, with all the Alien films, it's just grounding them that makes the stories feel that much more real. Like, mm-hmm. I, when I'm writing my own movies, I'm not... I, I'm not very good at, like, intentionally writing, like, comedy. Like, I don't think I could write a comedy film. In fact, I know I can't because I tried, and I don't think I did a very good job with it. But there are moments that kind of come up like something like that where it it just feels it, it's kind of funny and, but it comes naturally out of the situation a little bit and those are truthfully my favorite moments like 
Yeah, I think the best comedy comes from character. Yeah, it's it's like like filler on the roof is not a comedy film by any means. If you've ever seen that movie or that show, uh, but it's got some of the funniest lines of any script that I've ever read. It just because it comes naturally from the situation, and there's that kind of. Yeah, I, I, you know, there's the Jewishness of it a little bit. Or they're they're kind of trying to find some silver lining in a horrible situation. And here's the uh, Return of the Facehuggers, which James Cameron. Um, I'd get the hell out of there if I was Ripley. Uh, yeah, Ripley's not having a good time right now. Yeah. But uh, believe it or not, these facehuggers were redesigned from the first one because I think uh, Ripley just used like discarded oysters and crab yeah. to make them. In this, they actually like went full on Giger and made the underside look like a vagina with a penis coming out of it. Yeah, and I'm like, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's Giger. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Our first big jump scare. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Come give Granny a kiss. <laughs> Looks like love at first sight to me. Yeah, he likes you, Burke. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 I, don't, I don't know how they did that. It must be some kind of puppet, obviously, but that's that's, uh -huh. that's pretty well done. Yeah. I don't know what the lore is. I I think I think face huggers just live um, indefinitely, and oh. uh, uh, they just are dormant until they sense something uh, uh, a living thing uh, uh, approaching them yeah did the fog have something to do with i i think that? i think the implication was that the fog was keeping the eggs like in stasis yeah but i also think in other like um expanded universe stuff the the aliens themselves will just go into like a dormant state until something a potential host comes by and then they come back to life uh -huh. and they can sense that because they know when something is flesh and when something isn't okay. uh, like the way that they react to androids they it's like yeah. oh that's not flesh so they don't really know what to think of it so why does the alien kill that's a good question is it hungry um that's a good question <laughs> Okay. Um, I, it, it's it's a good question because in the first one the aliens just going around murdering everybody, but in this one, in this they, one it's using them. They're using them for hosts. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like what is the actual behavior of this thing and what's its prerogative? Um, I think in Alien Three we oh here's Newt again. Um, I think in Alien Three uh, we kind of maybe see it eating people, but it's not really clear that that's the case um it's not clear that the alien eats anything honestly oh, um right. i i think actually there's lore that suggests that when it when the chest burster first comes out it actually is consuming bits of its environment like actually like metal and it uses that or something to, to grow. It actually, from a biological standpoint, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, it is an alien. It is supposed to be weird, and we don't know how it functions. That's actually another criticism that the, that people don't like about this movie. They're like, well, the first alien, it was just this weird thing, and we don't know how it works. But in this movie, it's like... Well, now they're kind of like big insects that work like a hive. Yeah. And I don't necessarily think that's a huge problem. I think it's kind of a natural evolution mm -hmm. and development of how things work. But and he, they don't over explain it no. at all. But they don't. They, need they to. barely explain. They barely explain in this movie, which is perfect. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. You, it just makes sense. You don't have to explain yeah. it. But that is a good question, though. Um, right. Does it does it eat? Uh, why does it kill people if it needs to create hosts? Um, 
I, yeah. I don't know if that's ever really been fully I think that the hosting thing is sort of said in this movie. But yeah. I don't know if it, how much it continues in the So that's actually interesting because two. like um Alien 3 is interesting because they try to go back a little bit. It's it's like I think Sigourney Weaver said something about like you know, I, I felt like there were too many aliens in this one, so we wanted to go back to the mystery of there just being one. Okay. And it's like, I, 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 we'll talk about that movie. I almost feel like you can't, you know, close Pandora's box once it's been opened. I mean, uh-huh. But, um, but here we're getting introduced back to Newt, and, um, you know, kind of, uh, knowing that Ripley was a mother kind of brings a little bit more uh, weight to this this moment um, her you know longing to uh, fill that role in her life again Newt is um, I actually think Carrie Hen this was her this is her only credited film role after this, she decided not to pursue acting as a career. Yeah. Um, well, good movie to yeah have under your belt. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't want to talk too much about, like, the new character, because I know you haven't seen, like, Alien 3 or, or whatever, but okay. um, I, I do think um, New has the potential to you know kind of carry the franchise over um from this movie um it, 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 i i i think i i forget i i apologize i forget the name of the author uh but i was listening to one of the earlier studio yutani um interviews and i think it was sigler I, I think his last name is he was talking about like newt is the perfect person to succeed ripley because she has a built-in origin that you don't need to explain. Yeah. Uh, but it kind of gets thrown away a little bit in Alien 3. Uh-huh. So, um, but I do like the way this relationship kind of develops in this movie, though. And it's like, because New- Newt starts out, you know, traumatized, you know here and yeah, Ripley, her and Ripley are in similar yeah. places yeah 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 they're both they're both you know haunted by their pasts and they're both connected by loss due to this this creature and they're able to kind of find that that comfort a little bit in one another newt newt my name is newt Yeah, every moment with the two of them is very touching. Yeah, yeah. And and it's it it brings a lot of heart to the movie. Yeah. That's the thing about this movie. I think cuz I I love the grim dark stuff just as much as um the next alien fan, but I I also feel like it doesn't it's not I, I don't feel like it's very satisfying to throw the audience into the darkness and, and not give them a light at the end of the tunnel and give them some kind of silver lining to it all. And I feel like having this kind of touching stuff between Ripley and New really is that. It's like, this is the hope. This is, you know, maybe this can be fostered into something very loving and happy, you know, and that's what we're fighting for. You know, of course you get, you, you, we kind of miss out on that in alien covenant, you know, with bad guy clearly wins. Here's Bishop. Yeah. It's a small part in the movie, but yeah, this he, is a, he gr- does a good job. This is a really great part here because this yeah. is our first kind of hint that, Bishop has a little bit of ash in him. He's this like this fascination with this uh, with this monster, and it's like the, the sewing just a yeah magnificent. 
just sowing a little bit of doubt into the mm-hmm. audience about where he stands. And I love this line that Hudson just said, stop your grinning and drop your linen. <laughs> I'll just say that occasionally. <laughs> stop your grinning and drop your linen. Man. Hell yeah. Um, looks like a goddamn town meeting. <laughs> um, yeah, this is great. Ain't paying us by the hour. Yeah, so now uh, we're get approaching the midway point, and uh, they're about to go into the thick of this thing. Mm-hmm. I I like that Newt has this just little doll head, and she she had the whole doll at the end, didn't she? I mean, at the beginning, right? I don't remember. I, I don't remember either. But but that is that would be a nice I, I, little. Well, doubling kind of yeah you know. because it's if, if if that's true it's like it's kind of showing that like she, that's her like last little piece of her family and it, it's broken mm-hmm. you know and there's like wanting to hold on to that and that's that's really nice yeah i don't remember how they made these I, uh, this is a uh, an atv i i believe and i forget how these were created it would be easy enough i i think they were i think they just built like that styrofoam chassis around a car or something yeah. or something right some kind of custom dolly or something yeah like all the fog in this scene yeah the atmosphere is great the yeah. atmosphere of this whole movie is great yep and, and the lighting i i believe james cameron actually early on he was fighting with the lighting guy about this movie and James, you know, James Cameron knows what he wants. So he'll say, Hey, I want it to be like this. And the guy was like, no. And he's like, well then fuck you. You're fired. Yeah. And James Cameron doesn't fuck around. No, no. He, he's just like, okay, well then uh, you're, uh, you're off the movie now and I'm going to get the guy that I, that will do what I want. Yeah. And you notice the first movie had a lot of whites in it. This one's got a lot of blues. Yeah. The first, there's a, similar color palette but you can tell that there's yeah the 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 coloring in this one is blue the first one was kind of almost like a pale green yeah and this one is more blue ish and you know it kind of it really adds a lot to the overall feeling of it and in both movies they're done completely practically it doesn't it doesn't feel like they're graded you know that there's any Mm -hmm. specific color they're favoring in the color grading but it's all it's Mm -hmm. all the production design yeah well, in Alien 3, it, you'll see it's actually kind of red. Oh, really? Yeah, it's kind of an angry movie. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, now we're getting... Now we're seeing some familiar Giger-esque structures. I don't think Giger was involved with this movie. Um, okay. And... Definitely inspired by his work on the first one. Though. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it draws upon it 100%, but... Um, yeah, Giger was not involved in it. I don't know how Giger felt about the movie. I I don't I don't think he or Scott said anything bad about the film. I but I don't remember if they said any any like good things because I think they might have both been a little bit insulted that they weren't asked to come back. Yeah, and you know maybe there's some merit there, but I, at the same time I understand because James Cameron is like. A visionary and he knows exactly what he wants to do and he doesn't want anybody fucking around with that so i i feel like he i i honestly i feel like aliens is kind of like godfather part two to aliens godfather i yeah. i really don't feel like the films are that much in conflict i think they complement each other really nicely yeah i'd agree with that yeah definitely that is Alien 3, the Godfather 3 of the <laughs> franchise. Um, we'll talk about it. It, it, it. That one, it's a little bit mixed. Yeah. It, we'll, but we'll talk about that one when we get there. I, I'm excited, actually, to watch that one because I haven't watched it in forever. Yeah. Um, I want to see Fincher's uh, beginnings. Yeah, you're, uh, you might be a little bit disappointed. Well, I'm sure. Because I'm it's, sure it's not good. Well, it depends on how you're looking at it okay there's there's people that love alien 3 and then there's people that dislike it and there's people like me that are 
kind of like it it's kind of like a failed art movie yeah i love fincher so yeah. i'm excited to see mm-hmm. at least something by him yeah you know so here's a an interesting plot development. They realize they can't fire anything in the reactor because it'll blow the whole thing up. And this is the kind of the, oh man, this, this is so scary. Yeah, this is the beginning because this is the beginnings of the chaos. Because of course they're not happy about that. And no. yeah, and yeah, the moment that you lose control of the situation, things are going to go bad. But it also is revealing in a way they never had control in the first place. It's kind of like Jurassic Park. Yeah, it's this realization that yeah. you know where. Why did they go into this place here? So this is where the aliens are. Why did they go to the aliens instead of just nuking it from ooh, space? Ooh, right after you well, know, but, when well, nu- after Newt told them everybody was dead. Well, well, because well, because this is like a you know a multi-million dollar billion dollar establishment, and they want to see if they can salvage it. Okay. Like, the, like the colonial marines are owned by Wayland Utani. Yeah. So Wayland Utani is basically controlling the army, and sending them in here to hey, uh, fix our investment, Bring, yeah. get it back for us. Okay. So. I I, I oh this cheap it, video here this, that's scary uh, oh, yeah, it's this a is, scary sight yeah this is terrifying yeah. And I love that moment. I've always loved that moment. It's like, new, you know, don't don't look, go away. Yeah. It's because that's that's so real. Yeah. Um, this scene also gave me nightmares as a kid. This this one coming it's scary. up. Scary. Uh, oh, there they <gasps> oh, are. No. Oh no! Oh, there they are. Gorman's like, what? yeah. Gorman's like, what the fuck? Uh, that's so suspenseful. Yeah, because we've been sitting here for like an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the pacing in this movie is amazing. Yeah, it really is. Sitting here for at least an hour. Uh, yeah, this uh, this bit coming up right now. Um, yeah. I thought that was it. <laughs> no, this whole scene just keeps. It's like, when is that alien gonna attack them? Yeah, uh, yeah. This this right here. This scared oh, this scared the shit yeah. out of me. Yeah, this is this is dark. Uh, and and we got a lot of she's she's like kill me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, this is dark. Uh, yeah, this makes me squirm. Ah. Uh. And it's like they're saying it's gonna be all right, and Ripley's like they have no idea what's <gasps> gonna happen, and. It's uh, yeah. This is there's all sorts of layers of terrible stuff happening here, and it's it's so great. Does the does the chest burster wait for people to be around before it pops out? Um, it yeah. It's you know it's a bit of a drama queen. It's, okay. It's, 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 it, it it had a background in theater. It's waiting for the yeah. <laughs> it, the right a, moment to yeah. make an impression. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Uh, and here we are. Coming out of the walls. Uh, the aliens were, um, I believe, some uh, James Cameron got a, like, a group of like dancers or somebody from a, from a dancing school to play them. Wow. Uh, like, yeah, ballet people. And I'm like, oh, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Because you got to be flexible to do shit like this. I, I think the shot was just filmed upside down, but it, it's it's effective. Yeah. Uh, also, James Cameron removed the um, the shell on top of the head because so, he thought the skeletal part underneath was more interesting visually. I don't know if you noticed that. Like the ridges. Uh-huh. This is a great shot here. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Uh. Oh, shit. It's already going to hell. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh shit. Yeah, this is this is kind of what I mean when I say Aliens is such an unconventional action movie because it's like these characters are not action movie heroes. Yeah. And this scene really establishes that they're in a, a terrifying situation and they're all going to die if they don't if they don't get out of there. And uh, again, we can't hear it right now, but the music in the scene is great too. Uh, it's it's really showing like is I, I forget what the instrument is, but it's like everything's just going downhill right now, and you real really feel the pressure, and you really feel the anxiety and the horror of the situation. It's James Horner. I I think Horner was nominated for best score actually, oh. and uh, he was very pissed off because uh james cameron only gave him like six days to write the score wow for the entire movie yeah and he did a good job yeah because cameron kept on re-editing the movie to, uh ad nauseum until he got exactly perfect and he left cameron with or a uh, horner with very little to actually do uh-huh so now we get a uh, Ripley like realizing that in, in the situation where these people are dying, they need to, you know, they need help. They need to get out of there. And Gorman is b not being an effective leader. And in the, she's trying to take over the operation now. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good hero moment for her. And it's a, uh, you know, it's a really good, you know, character development moment. This is when Horner's score starts to turn a little bit more triumphant. Um, <clears throat> and you get uh, Gorman trying to stop her here. Uh, it's. Oh, I had a question about when they were stuck to the walls. Is it the were they stuck in the same way they are in the director's cut of Alien? I I think it's similar. Okay. But in that version, of course, they were turning them into eggs, and in this one, they're just using them as hosts. Which yeah. I feel like this makes a little bit more sense. Like, there's people that like that egg morphing idea, and. Some of the expanded materials have toyed with it, but honestly, it's it's a little bit convoluted. Okay. In, in my opinion. I don't know how you... I, I think we talked about it in the last one, but that's how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. um, one of these shots uh, where the alien um, gets blown apart, actually, I think gets uh reused a couple of times in this movie really yeah uh, when i see it i'll i'll point it out that's funny yeah there we this is a great shot i love that yeah that one right yeah. there that shows up later in the movie oh wow oh drake oh, oh no that's got drake hurt. no Acid to the face. Now th they could never get this uh, this upcoming shot here right. Uh, <gasps> it worked. Uh, well, uh, uh, not not this one. The uh, putting the shotgun in the alien's mouth. They could never get that right. So Cameron's like just. We'll just put it in his mouth and pull it out, and then we'll shoot it. We'll reverse it later. Oh. So, so they actually that was the shot they ended up using, but they could never like get the gun to go in properly. Huh. Works. You don't notice it at all. No. No. And getting them out of there.
Gorman just get knocked out there? Probably for the best. Uh, I think Gorman gets a redemption uh, a little bit later, if I if I remember correctly. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah that was good. I just wanted love. <laughs> Boom. It's like Ripley. It's all Ripley. We're just grinding metal now. <laughs> slightly kind of you know stock writing but it mm -hmm. works it works yeah there, there's another moment that's kind of a little bit of stock writing coming up towards the end but it's like whatever <laughs> I love the thumbs up from Newt that's great uh, Gorman you're absolutely useless I, it's been, I, I, I'm not up on my Spanish. Uh, pendejo means something. It's stupid, I think. Okay. <laughs> Man, I like Vasquez. Yeah, Vasquez. I love so Vasquez. So cool. Yeah, I love that. Vasquez. There's a, I think in one of the Alien versus Predator games, there was a character that was a play on her that was, re felt really stereotypical. Was, her, her name was Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you, are you fucking serious? <laughs> It's the Gila man. It's just so bad. It was so bad. I'm like, what? Come on. <laughs> uh, and I love this line. I use this all the time. I'm going to go in there and nerve gas a bunch of them? No, no, this one that Ripley says. I said we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. That's fair. This, uh, they should have been doing that from the beginning. Yeah, it's the only way to be sure. My say. Yeah. Oh, this fucking guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Paul. Okay, Paul Ryan. Yeah, yeah. yeah the they com can the build company me. man. Yeah, company man here. <laughs> and remember when we were looking at like uh, liberal pedia or whatever or conservapedia. conservapedia. Yeah, it was the most liberal movies and alien alien is like a critique of capitalism. Yeah, that's why it's bad. That's why it's bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, no way. A film that that, that that's about a, a mega corporation that's putting the lives of its crew at risk, uh, so it can make a profit. Don't tell me that that's a critique of capitalism. No way, I don't buy it. I'm surprised they didn't like aliens and say it's war scenes. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was the most pro-war movie around. Yeah, they were. Oh, did they really say no, that? No, I, I don't know. I think actually, it might have been on greatest conservative movies and worst <laughs> liberal movies. That's so funny. And now that we made this political, I could say I used the nuke the site from orbit for. for basically everything like like january 6th <laughs> i should probably cut that out <laughs> <laughs> but i'm probably not going to <laughs> uh, well, 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 yeah. <laughs> um but yeah we had uh michael bn there um which one is he uh oh he's uh he's hicks the blonde guy no He's he's the love interest. Oh, okay. He's backing up Ripley because uh, Ripley points out he's in charge now that uh, Apone is out of the picture, and he says, "Yeah, it's say we uh we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit." Right on. Only way to be sure. It's like hell yeah, man. Uh oh. Oh, that's nasty. Yes. Yeah, alien splooge. Uh, this scene's good. Yeah, this is good. I love this scene. This scene stood out to me. Yeah, it's like the midpoint, kind of the false victory a little yeah. bit. It's like, because you think they're going to get out of there and... The alien splooge, they should have... Yeah, that tips you off. It's not yeah. going to be... It's, 
God damn it. I, I love I don't know who this actress is, but she she does a great job in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's great uh oh get the fuck out of there you can tell it's a projection but it's pretty good oh yeah yeah that, that they they framed that really well yeah someone did a re-edit of this scene like when they're escaping at the end and they made it look like that was the drop ship that crashed and then it just cut to credits <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, Phil Paxton. And oh, here's, the, here's the famous line that everybody remembers coming up. It was fucking great, man. Say the line, say the line. <laughs> That's it, man. Game over, man. Game, Game over. <laughs> and this is uh this is another great line. Maybe build a fire, sing a couple songs. <laughs> or she say it'll be they mostly come out at night. Mostly. Yikes. Yeah. That's how you know shit's about to go down. Yeah. And she would know, wouldn't she? She survived this yeah. for however the hell long. Yeah, they should have just hidden the vents. Except they do for, they do later. Yeah, on. we yeah. should we should have just you know, taken off and nuked the entire site from orbit. That's what they that's really what they should have done. But you know. Wayland Yutani doesn't want that. They don't want to destroy yeah. their precious atmosphere processor. They should have killed Paul Reiser then. Probably. It probably would, would have, have solved been, a lot of problems. That would have been the most efficient thing to do, I think. It's kind of like you said, though. He, he presents himself as being kind of earnest up front. He so seems reasonable. At first. Yeah. But then he slowly pull back the layers, and then you get yeah. to that point, and it's kind of like, he's like, Okay, yeah, we all knew that was coming. He's, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where I do see where Alex is coming from. He is. Oh, I think it's kind of shocking when you realize that he locked them in there with the oh. face hugger later on. You're like, oh wow, so he's that bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's no. what I mean by that's why I kind of like yeah the reveals of his character as they go. No, definitely, it's it's because it, because you just think he's mm -hmm. he's he's just in favor of them trying yeah, to make it, more money with the company well, you know, work with the company yeah and he's thinking if i take out the primary you know well, yeah, force that's at trying, that point yeah he's like if i just take yeah. her out and you know maybe i can bring back the morale and yeah, it the turns under, very machiavellian yeah yeah very quick yeah exactly yeah. it may i'll make it look like an accident yeah right um there was a good moment with Newt where she's wearing the helmet and she kind of does this little Yeah, thing. that was cute. Yeah, yeah, I, lo I love that shit. Yeah. There's some people that don't like that. No, I like the character. I like ev every little character moment in these Yeah, I, movies. I think, I, again, I think it just kind of comes down to a matter of taste. There are people who do not like James Cameron style of writing, and I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I feel like it, it really, you know, I've talked about it before. It's very practical in a way, the way that he writes this and he he knows like when the right moments need to come up mm -hmm. you know it's like okay we need to have a little bit of tension relief here and we need to kind of have a little character moment here or there yeah those are both things that i think it kind of really carries the torch mm -hmm. from the first film very well including yeah. all those little character moments and 100 percent, yeah having enough shifts in tone throughout the movie you know and knowing how to space those out no i agree well i i i, I agree with that 100 percent um so you know they're looking at the map here i i don't remember it, it, the, you know they're trying to kind of figure out you know an escape um escape route i think but then the the century turret scene in this movie was also an addition 
to the special um, edition of the film, and it's another really great scene that kind of mirrors the um, the vent scene in my mind from the first movie, because mm-hmm. it's like you're all your you're not seeing any aliens. Yeah, you're seeing those numbers on the you're, screen. You're just seeing yeah. the numbers. You're just seeing the ammunition run out. That was really great. Yeah, yeah that's a great scene. <clears throat> all we need is a deck of cards. Uh, affirmative. Yeah, cute little newt moment. She, you see her kind of it start, it's starting to regain her humanity. Yeah, 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 after she, after it was taken from her. Right. And you know, kind of growing to a new family now, and I love it. Uh huh. Yeah, it sort of got that Jurassic Park. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. No, the I surrogate family. Yeah, and I and Jurassic Park is great too. I love yeah. it. Yeah. There's actually it are a lot of comparisons that you can make between this movie and Jurassic Park. It's inter- that's interesting, mm-hmm. and I think both films are kind of a good example of a well structured screenplay and a action mo- and a good good action or horror movie that mm-hmm. really covers all its bases in terms of comedy characters. Yeah, you know, I, a little of everything. Yeah, you know? yeah, and and both films kind of are a cover. Uh, anyway, because because uh, this uh, this film is like like you were talking about earlier, it's an action movie that's covering up a horror film, and and Jurassic Park is kind of similar. It's an an adventure movie that's covering up a horror film. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Yeah, and this is a great little moment here. It's sort of the beginnings of the the romantic interest, and we see the the family starting to form. Yeah. So here's this sentry turret scene. Um, like you're saying, I love this bit here. Because, because again, you're just seeing the numbers go down and you don't see how many aliens are there. And you just, it leaves it to your imagination. And it's fantastic. And this moment here is really good. Yeah, I, I love Very all Very emotional. Yeah, I love all these little these character moments between Ripley and New. I don't want to have scaly tweeners. (laughs) 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 Yeah, and and she has this line here. Ripley, she doesn't have bad dreams because she's just a piece of plastic, you dumb bitch. Uh, um, and and I love that because it's, it's it's Ripley trying to kind of remember what it's like to be a mother and kind of coming to terms with the fact that this kid has seen some shit. So it's again them trying to kind of find some grounding in each other and. You know, I love that that the way this develops. That's a good line there. Yeah, or that, that whole little conversation yeah, about yeah. the monsters. Yeah, why why do they tell little kids monsters aren't real? Because most of the time it it is true. Yeah. But. Yeah. So that's actually interesting because we don't have the. In the uh, theatrical cut, we don't have the moment where we realize Ripley has a daughter early on, but in this scene, we would have gotten that. Oh, really? Yeah, you think about okay. it. Okay. Like, I, I, I don't recall. Yeah. I, I don't remember if that was in the theatrical cut or not, but if it is, that's an interesting kind of revelation yeah. later on. And I like the the motion tracker thing. That's just a good How How do you think setup. that... Yeah, I haven't seen the theatrical cut in a very long time, but how would you think that would have changed things if you if that was in there? What the uh, beginning like, or? Well, all right. Well, I mean, like learning right then and there that she did have a little girl. I don't know. Hmm, that'd be. Yeah, I think it'd be a fine moment without the be- without the beginning, without knowing that in the beginning. I think it would have been a fine moment to just have that little piece of dialogue because really, we barely know anything about Ripley. Even by the end of this movie, we really have just seen her Mm -hmm. in two incredibly stressful situations and, you know, a handful of scenes outside of that. Mm -hmm. 
but we don't know. Well, I think this movie really. You know, if she was educated. We don't know if she. You know, there's a lot. Right. That. Well, I, I I think this movie tells us a lot about her, like that we didn't know from the first movie. Um, it really kind of brings her character kind of. But we know nothing of her backstory besides the fact that she had a daughter. Right. You know. That's that's sort of. Well, like, I'm assuming because of her position, she probably maybe had like a general education, but she was really she was a third officer running a space trucker thing. Like, I mean, she she probably has some kind of education, but she's not like. Well, I'm just thinking there's a lot, but that's that's yeah. all up to your imagination, though. Right. By the, by the end of this movie. You just know how she acts. Oh yeah, for that's, sure. That's really it. Yeah, we don't have all the facts, but right. we, but these are things that we can kind of is, insinuate based upon the information that is being delivered. And now here's the who's laying the eggs, and that was a question from the first one: where did all those eggs come from? And James Cameron has uh, an explanation here, which is we got a maybe a badass queen alien which some people have a problem with. And it's actually Ridley Scott's kind of one of those people. Really? Yeah, Ridley Scott's not... I don't think he hates the idea. I just don't think he's, like, too big All on right, it. he hasn't brought it up. Well, he was actually directly yeah. asked about it when, okay. for Alien Covenant, because they're like, so if David created the alien, uh, how does a queen fit in? And he just completely dodged the question. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> funny. Like, I was like, oh, he really does not like that I Really did not like James Cameron, did he? Did he? Yeah. <laughs> I, they, they, they respect each other. And they were collaborating on Alien 5. Oh, really? Yeah, before uh, Fox announced AVP, and they're like, okay, well, this franchise is ruined. Yeah. Uh, here we go. 79 so that's how that's that line right there is how we know the dates of almost every other movie in the alien universe really yeah it's because they don't say what year alien takes place in but so, if now, we, so you subtract 57 years yeah, and you got it yeah 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 so I'm, i can't do math in my head but i think it's one uh 100 uh, 11 22 i think is the, when the first movie takes place which would mean prometheus you mean 21 21 22 well it's 57 right so wait but where are you getting the 11 well because it's 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 1000 uh 179 that's so, the so, year so, yeah so it's 11 1179 it, it's so it, it's over a century into the future so it'd be 21 57 57 we, we got people that are listening to this commentary that are already have 11, their calculators 11 out. already happened uh, a thousand years ago. No, no, you, that's that's not what I mean. I'll, I'll write, write out the numbers. Oh my God, are you, for real? Oh wait, here, here's the ammunition scene. This, yeah, this, that's great. Yeah, I, I love this because again, you're not seeing anything other than those numbers going down. Yeah, 1179 AD. That was a thousand years ago, buddy. Nine, it was 900 something oh, years ago. Oh, it is 21, 2179. No, no. You're 100% right. I'm a dumbass. Okay. No, I, 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 was, I was really confused. That's all. No, no. I was. <laughs> I was. I was watching a movie and trying to do math at the same time. No, it's all good. <laughs> it's kind of like you're talking about an elephant and you're really mean. Oh, no, I meant a hippo. Right. It's all good. Th those things are not related. Um, we, oh, we might have missed it. You remember that stock shot I was telling you? Oh, yeah. I, it, that's in this scene. I didn't see it, yeah. Very pretty, Bishop, but what are we looking at? So, so now we're putting a uh, we're putting a timer on things. Yeah. Uh, this whole facility is going same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing from the first movie. It, it kind of is, except yeah. it's not being automatically triggered. Yeah. 
or or is it? Did they trigger it, or is it just something that's going to happen now? Uh, because they were think. shooting in the uh, in the process, and right. they weren't supposed to. Right. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I was kind of too busy talking about the movie <laughs> to pay yeah. attention. Um, Must be a better way. <laughs> Bill Paxton is, is a treasure. Mm-hmm. Um, no, rest it, in peace. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he will be sorely missed. He was young too. I think yeah. he was only like sixty six or something. I mean, that's fairly young. Yeah. And we got. Bishop kind of offering himself up and you could interpret this a different way multiple different ways you could be looking at it like he's got some other kind of motive or he's actually genuinely like because hey I'm not human so if if I get lost then it's not a it's not the end of the world right so you know you got Ripley kind of there wondering what's he up to what what's what's really going on yeah and I, I think that's great writing. Yeah, I like that shot of his head dipping down into that tunnel. Yeah. You know? Apparently, Lance Henriksen hated shooting this scene. And, oh, yeah. And you're, claustrophobic? Oh, yeah. I would hate this. The, I I can get kind of claustrophobic with, with shit like this. It's interesting he's bringing a gun with him because um, we kind of learn in later entries in the series the aliens um, don't really have a... They don't really feel anything towards androids. Yeah. But, like, um, in Alien Isolation, one of the most interesting things is there. there's a bunch of androids running around and the alien just kind of regards them curiously, but it doesn't really respond to them. And I thought that was always interesting to me. Yeah, this is this is scary. There's the stock shot. Okay. But but yeah, it's like you don't really see them uh, except for that one shot. Yeah. You really don't, you, it's like all you know is there must be a ton of them because look at the the rounds going down. Yeah. They, yeah, it's a great sequence and that cheap video again. Yeah. You know that. Helps so much. They, they they use that shot like four times now. Yeah. <laughs> but whatever. Right, they might crop it a little differently each time. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, right. it's just like, whatever, who cares? You can get away with so much as an editor. It, it, it's crazy. It, it's... It, it's all it all comes down to the story, you know. Mm-hmm. If you're telling a good story, you can get away with so much shit. And the emotion of the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's kinda like at the end of the first caught up, I if mean, you're caught up in something you won't notice. Well, it's kinda like the mistakes. end of, the end of the first alien. We we're talking about that ending special effects scene looks like shit, but at that point you don't care because you're so invested emotionally. In and it's a short shot too. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah it, it's just like, if you cut down, if you cut shots, shots down to, you know, one or two seconds, then yeah. And any, it's, any problem can be excused pretty easily. And, and it's literally the last minute of the movie. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're like, whatever. Stay frosty. <laughs> yeah. There, that's a famous one. I think almost every video game that's inspired by aliens has come after this. The main character, the player character, is called Frosty. Stay frosty, my friends. <laughs> I, I don't always watch aliens. I don't, I don't always shoot aliens, but when I do... I stay frosty. I stay frosty. <laughs> Hicks are not going to end up like those others. I, I like Hicks as a character because he you can tell he's kind of just a, a military grunt, but he has a little bit more of a heart mm-hmm. in ways, and it's like one of these things where you can see his... And then this here scene right out of, uh, <laughs> what, Red River? Except, uh, it, except it's heterosexual this time. <laughs> I haven't seen... Uh, 
guy's showing off his gun to this other guy. Oh, nice. But yeah, it's this is this is clearly it, doing okay. that same. I, you know, I subtext here. I I appreciate that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I think actually Scorny Weaver was against. Um, she did not want. She didn't want to do this. Yeah, this shot right here. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver didn't want to do this. She told James Cameron she didn't want Ripley to have a gun, and James Cameron's like, well, you have to. And then, so to make her feel a little bit more comfortable, he took her out to the shooting range. Mm -hmm. And she had a, she had a good time, and she said, you know, this is actually kind of fun. And, yeah. and James Cameron, I think, said, well, another liberal bites the best. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I do think this is a good scene, and I think kind of, I think it's a necessary development that we we give Ripley this, you know, uh, like she actually, in part of her journey to kind of conquer her fears of these things, she does have to kind of learn how to strike back a little bit. So I, I, I do think James Cameron's instincts were correct here. But it's interesting that they, they mix the slight love they mix this love interest part with the with the story of yeah ripley learning how to oh 100 percent be violent it's well, sort of an interesting well, double well, to, to defend herself but it, it's yeah. the it's the economy of james cameron's writing he's he's not just doing one thing in any scene he's accomplishing a bunch of things and that's good yeah. writing yeah. from a storytelling standpoint and from a business standpoint you know it's like, I can imagine James Cameron wrote out this movie and told you, I know exactly what the budget's going to be. Yeah. And the studio probably liked that. So the first Alien was $14 million. It was originally $7 million, and then Ridley's storyboards convinced them to double the budget, and then I forget how much this one cost. I think it must have been around the same. I don't know. Yeah, I love this shit, this moment here. Oh man, I, 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 it's gonna be so scary in a minute. Yeah, you you just like you know something, you're always on edge. Yeah, you know something bad could happen at any moment. Right. Um, it's a different sort of scariness from the first movie, but I like seeing Bishop stepping up and yeah, doing the work. Um, he he is an android, yeah. and that's kind of his place a little bit. Yeah. There's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of robo racism in in the alien universe. Mm -hmm. I, I do think um, post Alien Resurrection, there is some expanded universe materials where the uh, androids kind of have like start demanding their own rights or something. Oh. oh, yeah, here we go. Here, here we go. This was another thing that really scared me as a kid. Oh, yeah, this seems scary. Yeah. And it's just whispering, we're in trouble, and trying to keep her calm while figure a way out. Yeah. Yeah. Yo! <laughs> so apparently the, um, I, I remember something like the special effects team was having a difficult time trying to figure out how to make the face hugger crawl around. Oh yeah. Cause they, cause if you think about it, that never happens in the first movie. Right. And they were trying to try to make it work. And, um, I remember they were just having all sorts of problems with it. This damn futuristic glass doesn't break. figure it was plastic and it looks like oh Burke you son of a bitch yeah man yeah yeah this is so <laughs> look at that look on his face he's so well, good well he's so scummy because he's yeah. such a he's such a weenie and, and, and it's like that's you just like he's yeah such a weenie. no he really is but he's a great villain because he's just like he doesn't do anything except 
all right, I'm just going to drop this jar in here, and then I'm going to turn off the security camera. And yeah. Yeah, whatever. It'll take care of itself. All right, he's not a courage. He's not a strong villain. Yeah, but that's also what yeah. makes him kind of a good character. Yeah, because that, right. that, there's something kind of really human about that. Yeah, I, I spoke a little bit earlier about that glass, but it's like, yeah, it's like, damn future glass. Um, I do forget how they made this face hugger. They put some. They made some kind of cheap mechanism to make the the legs kind of. Uh, wiggle and then they just like pulled it on a string or something. Okay. Um, they did. I forget exactly what they did, but it was, it was like one of those things where they. Oh, that that's clever. Good job. They're coming. I like the lighting and oh shit! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so creepy the way it moves. Whatever they did, they did a good job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that was a reverse shot. Yeah, and that, so was that. But the man, and you feel how powerful. Oh, oh uh, yeah! I don't have time to comment on this movie. <laughs> There's too much good stuff happening. Um, but you can feel the weight of that thing, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, you feel like how much power, um, Ripley is exerting to try to keep it off of her. And that's true of a lot of animals. You know, they're stronger than they look. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Hicks or Hudson rather, it goes to town on this thing. It's like, yeah, I think, it, I think it's dead Hudson. That's so good. It's so scary the way it moves and everything. Yeah, what I um Yeah, here we go. Now uh now Burke's in trouble. Son of a bitch. And there's a there's a great line that Ripley says in this scene um, that I really really like. Um, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but she says something like, "You know, Burke, I don't know which species is worst. You don't see them fucking them over for you know uh, a few extra percentage points." Yeah, yeah, and it's like, yeah, comrade xenomorph here. <laughs> Yeah, um, Burke is obviously a corporate stooge, um, trying to get his hands on this thing. The co company really, Your really dog meat, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Listen to what you're saying. You're, you're, it's paranoid delusion, really. This is not reality. <laughs> it's really pathetic. I don't know which species is worse. You don't seem to fucking over for a goddamn percentage. Yeah, that's such a good line. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna <laughs> let's waste them. Oh shit! They cut the. <laughs> they cut the, the last... and they're animals, man. When we were watching the last movie, I was wondering how smart these aliens are. They keep getting smarter, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's some serious implications about the alien queen at the end, like that suggests that she's very intelligent, mm -hmm. um, more intelligent than you would think. Um, and I like those moments too. And we'll talk yeah. about them when we get there, but um, here's our next like major scene. I'll just, it's kind of crazy. We've only had, like I we're past the midpoint now and we've only really seen like, the alien we've only seen the aliens like one time already it's like you don't need it you know it's like the movie knows when you know we need to you know bring them out and this is another scary moment too it's like playing with this motion tracker like oh shit they're getting closer but where are they
you know, they're getting closer. Now, when I was a kid, actually, I, I kind of figured out, oh shit, they're in the ceiling before we were supposed to n know that that was the case. Um, where were you when you first saw this? I think the first time I saw it was, uh, what was that the theater? Yeah. And they're showing the rerun. Uh, I mean, well, I guess what uh, I'm asking what is mean? like, like. What I'm saying is, like, I kind of figured it out a little recall. bit. I don't remember. Okay. That if I knew they were in the ceiling, I knew. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, as I, I actually as a kid, I don't, I don't know how. I just kind of remember. I, I just kind of remember guessing, like, oh, they're coming in from above, and. Yeah. I, I don't know. I no. kind of spoiled the movie for myself a little bit. No, the other night when I was watching it, I could tell they were coming from above. Well, you, you but I didn't remember. I, I, I'm I talking, don't remember a little. Thing, I'm talking about so. the very first time i watched it yeah um i i don't know i i'm, I'm just just i was just curious to see well, if nothing in this movie's too like on a you know it's not stuff you can't figure out if you really think about it you know right well Which I mean, isn't a bad that's not a bad thing no you know? and it's not bad at all i was just that was more of a personal question yeah. for me. but i mean you do kind of know that uh that Burke is uh, is a son of a bitch. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, that's not hard to figure out. Yeah. Um, but the extent of it is what's it, yeah. shocking. Yeah. But yeah, this is. But now Ripley's starting to figure it out here. Like, oh shit, they're in. They're inside the goddamn room. And there's a you know maybe they don't shut off show up show up on in infrared at all. Here's a great shot coming up. Yeah, how does uh, the motion tracker not track the other people in the room? That is a good question. I think it. Just, I think there's like a certain radius where it probably doesn't pick up much. Sure. Uh, these are some great. Uh, these are some. There's some great effects yeah. working in the scene. I love like how the aliens are just kind of hopping around, and it's like that's pretty good for like suit yeah, you, you, don't, you don't really see the entire alien. No, you at don't. A time. You see it kind of go through your field of view real quickly. Right. Yeah. And blast him away. So yeah, uh, Burke, you bastard. Um, oh man, yeah. This this was another yeah. scene where you're like, wow, he yeah. he's going that far. Well, I mean, at this point, they were they were getting ready to shoot him in the face. Yeah. So, um, Which they should have done earlier. <laughs> probably, but um, this is another thing people don't like about this movie. You know, people that are kind of on the pro Ridley side are like, I don't like that you can just shoot the alien and kill it because it's like that. It's not. It's supposed to be an unstoppable. Yeah, and I'm like, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, the there is a vulnerability to it, right? Because that the whole reason they couldn't really kill it in the first one barring the fact they didn't have any weapons is if they did there's a potential it's going to bleed through the spaceship and yeah. you know that's going to kill everybody but there's something i i mean it's not like you can't imagine it's just completely unstoppable right like well she does get rid of it at the end yeah i mean yeah exactly <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I I don't know how much stock I put in that sort of thing. Yes, did did they redesign the alien costumes for well, this movie? The big thing, like I said earlier, is they they changed the head. Okay, because it had they had like these spikes or not like spikes, these weird tubes like coming out of. Oh, that was from the original. Oh, that was really well because coming off off the top of the head. It's not coming like, out of the top of the head. It's coming. They're coming out of the back. Okay. That's actually in the design, and uh, you couldn't see them as well, I guess. Well, they the didn't original. show them as much, yeah. but they're there. The reason that they had those is because, um, what was it? It was uh, the actor in the in the suit original. I forget. I forget his name. Um, I know who you're talking yeah, about. He, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the head is so big. Uh, you can't balance, so oh, they okay. added those to help him balance better, huh. and that just sort of became in the design. In Alien Three, they actually get rid of them, and it's interesting. Oh, okay. Um, but um, they seem bigger. They seemed more obvious in this movie. I guess I didn't really notice them in Alien. Um, uh, they're there though. Okay. I assure you. 
so th- this is really funny to me and i think james cameron pointed this out too he was like the only reason scenes like this in a movie uh work is because they're 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 going off at the fact that nobody has actually ever been in an, a ventilation system before <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like that's true if yeah. everyone's been in a ventilation system, they would know that this scene, the scenes like this are just total bullshit. Yeah. Because <laughs> the ventilation system is not this big, kids. That's a good shot. Yeah. I, I like how you can tell a little bit, but I like they're, they're using the momentum of these things. Like, clearly the alien is like, that's a shot looking down and uh, through a ventilation shaft, and they're pulling the actor up through it and they're kind of using that to create an interesting movement with the creatures as if it was just kind of crawling horizontally I like shit like that perspective mm-hmm. like that right there yeah that's good um, be careful you're gonna get up oh, yep there you go that'll happen man hey. It's just flailing around like that. That's good. So here's Gorman kind of getting his redemption a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm going to go back for her and I'm not going to be, you know, this. I'm actually going to take a leadership position and not be a, you know, I'm actually going to be brave for once. Uh oh. This is good. Yeah, I like this right. part. You always were an asshole, Gorman. But, but, yeah, I I like I like this moment. Boom. Ooh. And <gasps> yeah, that part's scary. Yeah. You know, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Uh oh. It's like a dark version of that Charlie Chaplin scene. <laughs> Which one was that? Uh, Modern Times, The Gear. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It kind of, kind of is. Yeah, I, I mean, it's. Oh, it's it, you what get, that reminded you, me of. Oh, no, no. It, it's like you. you you get inspiration from the most unlikely places and if it's like if it works use it Mm -hmm. that's kind of the great thing about film is film is a collaborative medium and when you copy what somebody else did that's like the biggest compliment in the world versus other kind of art forms like you know drawing or painting if you copy somebody that's considered to be really scummy you know but with film it's yeah well it depends how much you copy somebody too well, sure. I to mean, to a degree, yeah. Did, you know, there's there's ways you can copy someone where you're literally just yeah, yeah. Right. Like know. I remember there was a a fight between David Lean and I forget. David Lean directed a version of Oliver Twist in 1948, and then mm-hmm. I forget who directed the musical version in the 60s. Yeah. Um, that guy just straight up ripped off the ending that. David Lean had done uh, with Bill Sykes swinging from a rope, and David Lean was very upset about that. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know how much you can get angry about because they're adapted from the same source material. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, generally speaking, something like that, it's like if James Cameron is taking something from Charlie Chaplin, I'm sure Charlie Chaplin... If would he were been, alive, yeah. would have if he were alive he would have been you know, like hell yeah i yeah. i contributed something to cinema that was great enough that younger filmmakers are taking from it right yeah oh shit there it is oh yeah uh, that that's a great shot too and again you can kind of tell what they're doing it's all wire work but it this is the neat thing about aliens versus like you're doing some kind of animal but and that's good too it's like you see nothing but the doll head yeah. um 
I mean, you're doing something like it's an alien. It's like an alien can be whatever, you know? You don't know how it moves, so you're kind of give into it a little bit versus if it was like some other kind of animal that we know it would look okay well that's not real but right you know that's the great thing about space monsters <laughs> it really is it's it's great i would rather make a movie about a space monster than about something real because if it's if it's something real then i have to think about how it actually moves because people know that Oh, shoot. Ooh. Ooh. That's rough. Uh, that, and that was a good shot, too. I, I, I like how he's got the aliens moving in this. They, they're they kind of moving. In, they're not just like... Like, if you remember in the first one, even though we didn't see a whole lot of it, it kind of just moved like a guy in a suit. Mm-hmm. And this one, he's got him, like, crawling up, uh, on walls and upside down and out of weird places. And I really... I really like that. It makes him much stranger. But again, there's also something kind of strange about something that isn't human that kind of moves a little bit human too. So it's because uh, you know, I forget who said this. The scariest monster in the world is mankind, <laughs> and you know you see certain movies like The Descent uh, where th- those things are terrifying in that movie because they're they're not monsters they're the shining would be the shining is another example yeah, yeah. but if you haven't seen the descent justin or no. audience watching uh descent is a fantastic horror movie um check it out so now we're getting into act three that's a cheap shot yeah the lighting, the lighting's just a little off. The, 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 yeah, but I. It made it look. You, know, you can tell that's a toy it, it's, going. Well, well, it's composited. Yeah. But I, I think it's fine. No, it works. It, it, it works. It's just uh, you, you're the lighting's just a little bit off, but yeah. I, I think it, it's successful enough. It's good enough. You know, it, it, yeah. it, 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 you still get a sense of scope mm-hmm. and, and and everything, so. You know, it's kind of crazy to think. It's like I can create these lightning effects like with the staff of my fingers, but they actually had to like animate all this shit back oh, in the yeah. day, like like by hand. Right. Should have told. I like, I told my mom that I was recording today, but I need to remind her. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So now we get Ripley kind of gearing up here. For a um, gearing up to go and rescue Newt and uh, taking on kind of the the action movie hero mm-hmm. part. Now this is a moment that was for the special edition. They reveal their names. Yeah. It's Dwayne and Ellen, and I don't remember if this was in the. Um, I, I I mean I mean I, they reveal her name in the theatrical cut, right? It did, that wasn't just. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. If, if if that's like the first time that we hear Ellen is her name, that's pretty awesome. But yeah. I I I I don't think that's the case. But um, and in any way, it's a nice little moment where they they kind of reveal their names to each other. Um. So here's an interesting thing. There is a deleted scene in this um, when she's going down into the hive. She actually runs into Burke, uh, cocooned to the wall, and he's been face hugged, and uh, she gives him a grenade. Uh-huh. And he's like, "It's like I'm like kill yourself. Yeah. It's the best thing that I can offer you. <laughs> it's 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 simultaneously a mercy and a uh, and a fuck you. Screw off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fuck off and die already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, not included in uh, any version of the film. Probably for pacing reasons. Uh, but it is kind of a cool scene on its own. Yeah. This whole elevator going down scene is cool. Yeah. Well, it's setting the stage for the big moment. Yeah. Um, and 
we've only had one hint that of the alien queen up to this point. So you kind of almost forget about it a little bit. Yeah. Because now the the focus is on let's get nuked. Yeah, I like this here. So, and so I forget how much uh, time is is left. Uh, I, I think that the computer said like seventeen minutes or whatever. Hmm. I man, I, don't, I can't remember. I think something like that. Yeah. But, but there's not a lot of time left. This thing's going down. Yeah. And it's it's getting hot in there, so it's kind of is the it actually is kind of the opposite a little bit of uh, the Nostromo scene from the first one. She's now on a time limit, but rather than trying to get out of the processor, she's trying to go back in and and then get out. And I like that too, just like leaving her, leaving the trail. It's just a little detail, but it adds so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, that's actually something I forgot is that new has the little watch thing yeah so that's how she's able to try oh yeah god bless you james cameron I, I mean he's so good at stuff like that it's like in titanic when leo and uh and uh kate winslet have the little like spitting contest at, early on it's kind of a funny character moment where she's learning how to step outside her class and then later it becomes a plot point where she, she spits in billy zane's face and it's just like if it happened and we didn't have that little setup beforehand it'd be like well it worked but it was kind of weird yeah but but um because we had that setup yeah, you connect one to one one to another yeah it's yeah. that's that's good writing oh yeah and oh shoot she finds it and it's like oh no and why would you not assume the worst uh, but maybe maybe there's a chance because it doesn't appear the egg has hatched yet eh. <laughs> happy birthday that looks like the food that they were eating in the first alien <laughs> the noodley part uh oh Hired Ridley Scott to come back and play the facehugger puppet. <laughs> Is this what I've been reduced to? Um. I don't know how they made all the goo and stuff. It kind of looks like plastic wrap. Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. fine. If it works... Plastic wrap and KY jelly. You don't, you don't, it, it's not that difficult. It's just, you know, it's just having, you know, you plan it in advance and make it work. And now we're, uh, Now we're in the, the thick of it. And this scene is one of the best scenes in the movie, in my opinion. Um, again, there's a group of people out there that aren't thrilled about the concept of the alien queen, but I think this is a great scene. That's also just somebody in there just pushing the egg out, by the way. that's There's nothing complicated about that. 
There's just someone inside the sack, just physically pushing it out. Um, Stan Winston designed the Alien Queen, the great Stan Winston, and uh, it's a uh, mechanical animatronic puppet that you know kind of is the basis of the uh, dinosaurs in Jurassic Park a little bit. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, wow. The thing's big. Yeah. She is beautiful. Got a little mouth. Yeah. All hail the queen. <laughs> but, but, um, what I love about this scene is that, um, Ripley here... It's, they kind of have a dialogue here with no words. Like the queen is smart; she knows, you know, what's going on, and she knows what that fire is. And yeah. so she's she's saying, "Okay, do we have a deal?" And she's like, "Okay, yeah, deal." And that's spooky. But what's also interesting, she she's smart enough to know that that Ripley is has the potential to destroy her nest, but she's not smart enough to know that the nest itself is about to blow up in ten minutes. So there's something that's kind of realistic about that too. She is at the end of the mm -hmm. day as smart as a, an animal as she is. She's still an animal. Ah. But then it's of course like <laughs> torch the place. Yeah. So uh, this is the other bit of stock writing that I was kind of talking about. Like even Cameron like acknowledged this. Like, like there is something like psychological about like, you know what? I need I actually need to like torch this whole place because if I don't, um, I'm not going to be able to move past anything. But it's also a little kind of goofy that she would actually take this moment to just destroy everything. But also at the same time, emotionally, it's really satisfying. Like, fuck you. And, yeah, fuck you too. It's like just giant yolks falling out. <laughs> But um, but I really like that scene though because it's it's a great example of yeah. just you know telling a story without the words yeah and, and that's um you know that's kind of the basis of film. And Cameron's very good at it. Yeah. And rips off her ob positor. the flare again just a little detail but it adds so much you know because it's like it's telling you geographically where they're at you know so little stuff like that like a lot of people can it's easy to kind of look past stuff like that but it's so crucial and it's you know one of the many reasons why i i think james cameron is a fantastic filmmaker Uh oh, four minutes to reach minimum safe distance. And there's a shot here coming up of, uh, of the queen. she's not happy <laughs> yeah, 
I've always liked this shot here because it's like, oh god, and it's it's great perspective too. She looks gigantic. And that's the thing too. It's like you're thinking like you could have just walked out of there in in that moment and but it's like if i don't personally take this moment to blow it up it's like i'm still gonna be traumatized to an extent does the queen come back in uh the upcoming a little bit all right i don't i don't want to spoil it for you um but I, i am excited to get to that one um but then Ripley comes back and realizes that Bishop has taken off without her, it seems. So you know, maybe she was right to be suspicious all along. But then, yeah, the queen's coming up now because... She figured out how to work an elevator? Yeah, she knows... I did not noticed that no she she recognized that the elevator was going up and so when the other one came down (laughs) i don't think that's a little bit too much tell me an alien figure out how to work an elevator well she's the big brain though right right but an elevator i i i can see but you think a monkey could figure out an elevator maybe i mean we established that she's pretty smart Right, but that's that's complicated. I mean, like an octopus could probably figure that out. It might not be able maybe. to physically do it, but maybe. it could figure out there was a connection. I don't know. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, here she comes. Oh. Uh-oh. Hey! hey. <laughs> Yeah, Bishop coming in. Yeah. Saving the day. Hell yeah. Love Bishop. So good. Leave that bitch behind. And, the, and we don't see the alien queen here, so obviously she was just she's just out of the picture now. Yeah. Uh, it's a shame the dropship's getting caught on a ragged piece of metal. <laughs> yeah. That's a good shot. That's good good VFX. Oh, yeah. You love all the different colors going on here. Oh, yeah. It's visual chaos. Yeah. These, these shots are questionable, but... Sure. Whatever. And then this is great. This coming up here is great though, because they just put a light bulb underneath the cloud and pushed it up, and it 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 looks like a nuclear explosion. Huh. That's like it's pretty good. Works. Because 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 visually, if you were seeing that, it would it'd be they're very very far away. So if you see shots of like mushroom clouds going through clouds, it's kind of interesting how they look from from a hundred miles away or whatever yeah but now uh things are good we've uh or are they what well of course they are why would why would things get bad it's it's like this is they 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 escaped the 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 site was blown up and they got away there's no way an alien made it onto that shit yeah there's it's impossible i could never imagine how does the alien always figure out how to man He's a, he's a smart boy. And very smart. It's, yeah. It's kind of unbelievable. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, James Cameron doesn't write fourth acts. He's not Ridley Scott. We'll see about that. Sorry if I scared you. Yeah, racism is over now. <laughs> Just like when Obama got elected. Well, we need to have a we need to have a robot president. Oh shit! Ah! <laughs> oh, no. this freaked me out as a kid too. Yeah. Uh, I was like, 
And she, there she is. Ah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, that's freaky. She's like, thought you got rid of me, eh? Some unsettled business here. This is good. Yeah. It's, it's me you want. It's like a mother to mother kind of in a way. That's, a, I think that's the miniature. Okay. Yeah. It, like, this is all miniature. Right. I believe. Um, I, 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 I'm I actually not entirely sure which ones were the animatronic and which ones were the... Uh, now, was this done the same way as the head on the table? It in, must have been. It looks like it. it the, I, I can't imagine how else they would have done that because they didn't have digital technology right. that would be sufficient enough to pull that off. So, yeah, they must have. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah, no, it looks great. You don't think about it. No. Um. This is, this is spooky. Reaching in after him. Yeah. And then here's more of that James Cameron setting up stuff from earlier. Yep. Yep. Set up, pay off. And say the line. Say it. Get away from her. Get away from her, you bitch! <laughs> There's no score in this scene. And it doesn't need it. It's sufficiently intense mm -hmm. and badass. Yeah, I think that's, this is all the miniature. That's real. That's, I, I don't, honestly, I lost track of what's what. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But that's how good this is. Good at like matching up everything so that mm -hmm. it, yeah. Battling the alien queen. And it's kind of a step up from the first one because, you know, it was really like there was a lot more vulnerability to Ripley in the original ending. And in this one, she's taking on the creature head on. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, again, there's people that don't particularly like that. They think it makes the alien less scary. Know that you can just fight them. I think in terms of storytelling, I think it, it, it's it's powerful to realize you can to an extent you can fight the the dark forces of the world but now it, it, now there is now this coming up though this is the shot that's comparable to the last minute of alien in terms of like the special effects here are a little bit wonky mm -hmm. um this whole thing falling into the uh the airlock like this yeah Eh, I thought it looked good. Yeah, I mean it's fine. I, it, it's mostly like this. Like here is a little bit weird. What happened to the end of her tail? By the way, like I don't know if you saw that. But it's like the barb actually broke off. Like see that? Oh, wow. yeah. It's like what happened there? <laughs> oh shit. Uh oh. Same ending as the first one. You gotta blow it out of the goddamn airlock. Yeah. It's like the end of alien. Every alien movie, <laughs> blow it out of the goddamn airlock. How is he gonna get rid of it? Yeah. Exactly. That looks like it's gotta hurt. 
Oh uh, yeah, I don't. I don't actually buy that she's holding on, <laughs> to be honest. Right. But, um, yeah. I had an idea. I for, like that shot the, there when I, he's spinning around. No, no, I like that too. I actually had an idea that the queen actually survived that and actually ends up on some other like moon or whatever. <laughs> it starts. A, it starts a new hive. Oh. And uh, the. Uh, I also had an idea similarly, like the alien that gets blown out of the airlock in the first one somehow survives, and I I don't know where where that would go or if that matters. I just thought that <laughs> that'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. This part stresses me out. Like, oh shit, get your leg out of there. <laughs> I don't know why. That always just like, yeah. like no no just pull your leg out. Bishop says a line here that's a little bit of a callback to something earlier. Not bad for a human. I like Lance. He's cool. Yeah, I like Bishop. Yeah. No, it's now we're at our true ending. Hicks going into um, hypersleep. And, and this is a very, very sweet moment coming up here. I really like this. I think we both yeah and that that's good mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean it's like you know, up until this point she's had nothing but nightmares but now she can dream mm -hmm. and that's good writing affirmative <laughs> and I love it she's kind of a little military brat now and yeah now now we're kind of seeing the setup a little bit of them you know that we have the three of them as a family and now mm -hmm. it's like well we got a she lost a daughter she lost a mom and now they have each other mm -hmm. and that was aliens um i think it's a pretty solid film yeah. and i i think i have lots of great things to say about james cameron i think he's brilliant um and i think uh aliens is pretty close i i i i mean I'd have to say Aliens is, at the very least, in my top three James Cameron movies, if it's not number one. I mean, it... So Giger has a credit on here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was credited for yeah. the design. And just, like, Ron Cobb and Sid Mead, but I don't remember if they... I don't. I. I don't if think they went back to him. Yeah, I don't yeah. think Giger was involved with this. I don't remember if Ron Cobb or Sid Mead were involved with this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I. I. Uh, I think, like I was saying earlier, I think Aliens is kind of the Godfather Part Two to Godfather's Alien. Um, I. I think they're they complement each other. Um, I, I, I talked a lot in this commentary about kind of the schism in the community. I don't know if that schism is as big as I was making it out to be, but it is something I've noticed. Um, and I, I think for the most part, people kind of see this one and the last one as being the, the two best in the series easily, um, regardless of which, like, you like to better. Yeah, mm -hmm. which tone you prefer yeah. or which approach you like more. Um, but it is interesting if you look at the films that are coming up and we've got two more in the series that we're going to look at alien three and alien resurrection they kind of do at least alien three almost does try to course correct in a weird way by going oh, back yeah. it tries to go back yeah it's just one alien in in a facility and there's uh, that's kind of interesting because because there there's a lot to talk about with alien three um okay. um 
and going off from this one, but uh, suffice it to say, James Cameron's uh, idea for the third movie uh, was not uh, pursued. Um, you got any final thoughts? It's a good movie. <laughs> yeah, I think it's solid genre film, and uh, thank you for watching it with us.